Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Math Easy, your all-time favorite YouTube channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Math DC series. So I'm going to start a new topic that's uh, ankylosing spondylitis. It's uh, another common disease in medicine. So ankylosing spondylitis is a seronegative spondyloarthropathy. So it mainly affects the axial skeleton rather than the appendicular skeleton. There is a fusion or ankylosis of vertebral column or vertebral bodies and SI joints. It is common in males and uh, commonly seen in second and third decades of life. Actually, it's a rheumatoid factor negative in the disease when you test blood and also HLA B27 gene is positive. There are a few associations with uh, ankylosing spondylitis. When you are considering the patient, you have to look for these features also. The anterior uveitis, aortitis and uh, apical fibrosis in the both upper lobes. So you have to keep those things in your mind when you are dealing with a patient who is having ankylosing spondylitis. Our main aim is to discuss imaging features in this video. So first look at the x-rays. So this is the lumbar and uh, say lumbar spine and sacroiliac joints in a skated immature patient. So you can see some uh, fusion of the vertebral bodies here. So there's symdesmoid formation here. So there's actually ossification of annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc leading to fusion of the vertebral bodies. So there are a few ossification of uh, here ossification of intervertebral disc. Here you can see ossifications here the subtle findings so main thing is fusion of the vertebral bodies and also giving rise to appearance of uh, bamboo spine you can see fusion of the SI joints also you can hardly see the SI joints so it's ankylosing spondylitis symmetrical involvement of sacroiliac joints can be seen it's another patient yeah you can see fusion of the vertebral bodies and also squaring you see squaring of the vertebral bodies also there so you can see some disc ossifications subtle ossifications here so it's another example squaring of the vertebral bodies and ossification of annulus fibrosis here another feature yes fusion of the vertebral bodies and also ossification of interspinous ligament appearing as dagger spine we call it dagger spine you can see hyperdense line in the center of the vertebral bodies so there's ossification of interspinous ligament slight coliosis is also there here here the neck lateral uh, radiograph of the cervical spine you can see the ossification of anterior log anterior ligament and also white formation and fusion of the cervical spine also you can see it's another example so ossification of anterior long anterior ligaments 1DD is a dish diffuse idiopathy skeletal hypostosis so here there's fusion of SI joints you can see some sclerosis in the just articular surfaces and also fusion of SI joints and sclerosis it's another example for ankylosis spondylitis this is the CT bone window here you can see syndesmophyte formation and ossification of the anterior longitudinal ligament here you can see ossification of intervertebral disc and here you can see a fracture of the vertebral body you call it chalk stick fracture yeah it's a fracture so due to fusion of the vertebral body, the, the fracture occurs to the vertebral body. So it's another example. So this is the MRI, T2 weighted MRI, sagittal view, spine, lumbosacral spine. You, here you can see some uh, hyper intense areas in the adjacent vertebra. Here you can see again 
this kind of a non-infectious spondylolisthesitis and also called Anderson lesion. So there is some kind of a intradiscal herniation of the nucleus pulposus into the vertebral body. It's kind of it appears as Schmoll's node. So actually it's kind of a spondylodiscitis in which occurs in ankylosing spondylitis. However, it is not uh, infectious uh, origin, infective origin. So yeah. And here is a again T2 weighted MRI in the lumbar spine, sagittal view. You can see in the corners of the vertebra there are high signal areas. High signal areas in the vertebral bodies come kind of a marrow edema. So you, you call it Romanus lesion. So it's a kind of an early lesion which occur in ankylosing spondylitis. When they get ossified, you call it shiny corner sign. It can be seen in x-rays and in MRI as uh, low signal areas. So these are Romanus lesions. So this is the frontal chest radiograph in a skate and mature patient. You can see some um, reticular type opacities in the apical regions here yeah. and few dilated bronchi here yeah, also. So these are fibrotic changes giving rise to volume loss and traction bronchiectasis. So there is apical fibrosis bilateral. And uh, so this is the HRCT chest of that patient. You can see fibrotic changes in both apical regions with dilated bronchi here. Yeah. So kind of attraction bronchiectasis is there. And this is the contrast enhanced CT chest and uh, you can see it's kind of an angiogram actually, a autogram in the CT and uh, you can see aneurysm in the ascending aorta. Yeah. You can see fusiform kind of aneurysm in the ascending aorta. It's due to aortitis which is seen in ankylosis spondylitis. Yeah, it's a aneurysm of the ascending thoracic aorta. So these are few radiological features which can be seen in uh, ankylosing spondylitis. So that concludes ankylosing spondylitis. Please subscribe our YouTube channel then you will get notifications of our new videos and also you can comment on our videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this.